So I looked up in my, my trusty Collins book of birds tonight, and it said about the swift, that the swift is actually a, a very common bird. This was in 1978. Now the same sadly does not apply now. So here to talk about the swift, its life, its times, its conservations, and its history, Linda Hudson. January evening. Um, I know quite a lot of you, but there's probably a few I don't know, so I'll just um, maybe explain that I'm, um, my background is in administration, so I work at GMIT in Casabar. Uh, before I go any further, I'll say I'm going to try and speak without the microphone, so if anyone um, is struggling to hear me, just shout up and I, um, I will use the microphone. Um, but I, I like to kind of wave my hands around, so <laughs> um, I'll try without and hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Um, so I work at GMIT in administration and I'm involved with the Green Campus. Um, you may know that uh, GMIT's ca uh, campus in Castlebar is the first IT in Ireland to get a green flag. And so this is how the SWIFTs actually are all involved with that project in that they fall under what's called the Biodiversity three theme. Um, I'm also um, involved in Swiss Conservation Island, and uh, you can see um, the, the blog address here. This, this is actually set up by Nihal Casey, who's um, involved with Sligo uh, Birdwatch, and he's based in Tubbercurry and has uh, Swift nest boxes in Tubbercurry. And he's trying to get all the information on Swift projects in Ireland onto that blog. Uh, so. I should also add that I have no background, um, or no official background in ecology, but I'm very lucky because I'm married to an ecologist. So for the last 30 years I've been going to his um, School of Ecology. I uh, haven't graduated yet, but I'm, <laughs> I'm trying very hard. Um, so before I start to talk about the Swift, I just want to play a little bit of video. Um, I've got three videos to show you, and Bill's going to rescue me if all the technology goes haywire. Um, this first video is um, t filmed uh, at GMIT, and it's showing um, a bit of the behaviour about the swift. You'll see swifts uh, flying up to a building wall. You'll be able to get an idea of the, uh, the speed with which they fly, the, the call, the scream, um, and the, the, a group of swifts is called a, a screaming party. So hopefully you'll be able to kind of see and hear that and you'll see how swifts approach a building and how fast they do that. So here he goes. Um, okay, so far so good. Again. Can everybody hear the calls? Yep. Some of you may not be able to because of the frequency, um, but it's, that's the typical sound of the swift. And um, I'll just see, can I just run it back a little bit? Okay, can you see um, the birds here are trying to get into the building? there behind the fascia board that the guttering is attached to. This is what I call the traditional site for swifts. They found that nesting place and what they do is they fly at the wall, they cling onto the wall and they climb up behind the fascia board to um, build their um, insubstantial nest at the top of the wall. information about the SWIFT, um, the problem that the SWIFT is facing, um, the solutions that um, I'm trying to apply to Mayo, um, and also how you might be able to help. 
And you'll see there I've got, um, you can see this little booklet which features in the, in the bottom um, of the screen. We are Swifts, we are in trouble. This is a little booklet that I put together um, and, uh, last year and initially printed a thousand copies and they went so quickly I printed another three thousand. And this is just an awareness raising tool. Um, there are copies at the back and they're one euro, but in fact the one euro is just to uh, enable me to, to print more. And there's lots of inf um, useful information in, in that booklet. So first of all, um, what I found is there seems to be quite a lot of confusion uh, between um, the four birds on the screen. And so I'll just very, very briefly um, show you just some key pointers. The first is that the swift um, is a hidden nester, so you won't see its nest um, from the outside. It, as I showed you there, it climbs behind the fascia board or into a hole onto a, into a, a nest within the roof space of a building. And the, the nest is very, very insubstantial, and I'll explain why later. Um, whereas the house martin and the swallow, they've both got mud nests, and you'll see the swallow is the barn swallow, so it builds its mud nests in, in our buildings, and the house martin would be the mud nest that's on the outside of a building. And then you've the sand martin, which actually lives in colonies and would usually be in like a quarry face or, or um, a bank along the side of a river. So obviously there are other differences, but that's just very quickly to explain um, a simple way. Um, so the swift uh, is the common swift that we're dealing with. It's the, um, it's the only swift that occurs in Ireland, although there are 92 worldwide. Uh, the common swift is the only one that we have here. And it comes here in late April, and it's already left us by um, early to mid-August. to mid -August. There may be the odd one that hangs around, but those are the, the specific <coughs> dates. So as I said, they breed here. So they actually, I suppose that could be the most important part in, in their life, is to actually come to Ireland and to, to breed. And, but they're only here a very short space of time, and the rest of their life they're spending in Africa, in southern Africa. <coughs> You can see that we're actually on the, the really the western range of the Swifts range. You know, we're right out on, on the edge of Ireland, so they really can't get much further west than, than we are. And that obviously has its challenges from the Swifts' point of view, um, because uh, they, um, the bad weather can really affect their, the success of their breeding. Um, so until a few years ago, uh, we, although people knew that the, the swift went down to uh, Malawi, to Mozambique, we didn't really know how they got there. It was assumed that they would just fly straight from northern Europe and just go straight down across the Sahara, the quickest route. But in fact, that's not what happens. Uh, the BTO, the British Trust for Ornithology, uh, they put geolocators on the swifts in East Anglia. So the geolocator is, um, is this little blue, blue chip and it's, it's very small and it's very light. Um, so although it, um, it does hamper the flight a little bit, it's not significant. So they put a geolocator on a swift at, the, at its nest in East Anglia and then it went all the way down to Africa and when it came back up to East Anglia the next year they removed the geolocator and they got the, the readings of the route it had taken. So I'm hoping that you can see the line that it took, this red line here. So in fact, they do go along the west coast of Africa, and they kind of hang around here, and then they'll travel down. Most of them will travel down um, as far as Malawi and Mozambique, but some of them do actually hang around here, which I think is the Congo, if I've got that right. Um, and it's assumed that the reason they take that route is because of the food, because they're going over a, not a dry desert, but they're actually taking a route which will carry them over um, tropical forests. Um, the, there's one interesting thing is that in, they did um, put geolocators on swifts in Scandinavia, so they're at that bit further north, and so they didn't go down as far as the UK swifts. 
they stopped at the Congo. So it was almost as if they had a mileage break, you know, that it said, right, we're going so far and that's it, we're not travelling anymore. <laughs> um, this is, the, you can see the size of the ge geolocator here, it's about the size of a, a, a one cent um, coin. So the, the Swifts um, name comes from Greek for footless. Now they are footless, um, uh, but they do actually have very short legs. And um, they've got, if, if you kind of assume that my, le my arm is a Swift's leg, um, they, most of their leg is this part. Um, this is very short here. And what that does is it means that they cannot walk around on the ground. They can shuffle around but they can't walk around and they can't take off easily from the ground either. But they've got a, a really, really strong grip. And so when they uh, fly at a wall to get into the nest site, they grab onto the wall and then they pull themselves up. This picture, this is actually a chimney swift. They occur in America, um, but of course they're doing the same thing. This bird is grabbing onto the side of, of a wall and it'll climb <coughs> to the nest site. And you can just see how short the swift's uh, leg is on that picture. You'll also notice there's a ring here on this swift. Ringing, most of you probably know, was how um, putting little rings on birds' legs was how we got information previously. Um, but of course, things that technology's moved on a heck of a lot now with geolocators. So the swift is our flying machine, um, a little bit like the fighter jet that we've got down here. Um, they, <laughs> they, um, they'll fly at a, a top speed um, in a dive of, at 134 miles an hour. So they can do a steady speed of 65 kilometers an hour, no problem at all. And it's said that they'll fly from London Paris in a day and feed, that's not a problem for them. They can travel very large distances and they do everything at speed. They're very kind of hyper birds. You don't see a swift really flying around slowly. They're always flying uh, fast. And the, the wing shape here is very important um, for that speed. So this is very interesting about the swift. Um, they really have to spend all of their life on the wing, apart from when they're in their nest site, they're actually breeding. So when a swift um, chick leaves a nest, it will fly for two years before it lands again. It will fly from Ireland to Africa, it will come back and it will do that again. So it's kind of the fifth journey, if you like, before it lands. and. That is something, I think, which is very hard to imagine. So how does that bird manage to sleep? And they sleep on the wing. So they will go up to a height. It's been said that they go up to about 3,000 metres. I don't know. They definitely do go up in groups. And they, they shut off half of their brain um, so that one half, the, the awakened half, is keeping the, the bird... Um, not float, what's the word? In flight. <laughs> um, and we're, we're, so we're, it's kind of sleeping half a brain at a safeguard as many of their nest sites as, as possible. Because when they lose a nest site, then it could take them years before they find another, and they may not find another. Um, so then we have the building of the nest, which, as I've mentioned, takes, can take up to two years. Eggs is normally uh, two eggs, but, they, but there are some that have three. So you see here, this is at the nest boxes at the college. We've got two eggs there. And then incubation of the eggs is three weeks. And you see here, we've got uh, chicks just hatched here that are being fed. Um, both of the adults feed the chicks. And then fledging, so from the, from the hatching of the eggs to the fledging is about six weeks. So because the swifts are only here from, say, late April to early August, they really only have time to have one clutch, that to rear one set of young. They will try, um, if they lose their eggs for whatever reason, they will try and, and try again, but only within the first few weeks, um, because time is very short for them. <coughs> 